you know, he's full of life and he's very open and uh, very friendly, you know. So that, uh, I really like that. And of course, being uh, an Agatha Christie novel and, you know, a bunch of reasons. So I was really, really excited when they, when Kenneth offered me the, to play Benjamino. Kenneth is very, he's amazing because he doesn't give you like ultimates, you know, he's like, oh, this is the guy or do this, or he just tells you, I, know, I just think, you know, what if this, what do you think? Like, he's very open to, you know. Uh, so we talk about that and about the look a little, uh, which is amazing, all the characters. Like every time, I, every day I'm shooting, I see everybody and it's, it's just amazing. The idea I had of the mustache was, you know, like a, just a little, uh, just like a line. And I talked to Carol, which is amazing, and she gave me this, this great idea, and we came to the conclusion of having this kind of mustache, which I don't know the name of it, but uh, she's like, no, I, mean, I think this guy, since he's very, you know, very Latin, very, yeah. I think we, have, we need a mustache with more personality. So we ended up doing this, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> Personally, it just fascinates me what he does, you know, it's just, you see him, you see him, you know, in character, which is a very, you know, complicated, you know, he has the accent, he has the mustache, the, the, you know, the physicality of a, of a character. And at the same time, he has to put the camera and not just that, and then direct actors, you know, Johnny and <laughs> Judy Dench. And I don't know how he does it really. It's, it's just amazing. It's first time I work with, you know, some, somebody like this. And I think I'm enjoying it. At the beginning, I was a little afraid. But I think he does it on kind of on purpose, but he doesn't tell you. And like, no, he tells you, but it's like, I think he wants and likes the uh, surprise factor on the characters because it's part of the, the story, you know, to be this little... Uh, to have a little anxiety, to know, I don't know what's going on, you know? Very lucky to work uh, with such actors and directors and doing this story, which is magnificent. And, you know, my, my second scene too, I, I was, I think I, had a, I almost had a panic attack because I was, we were all on the train. I had Judy Dench here, Penelope over there, Willem Dafoe over there, you know? Hey, Vale here. Now, hundreds of movies come out every year, but very few are hits. Here are America's top five highest grossing movies, adjusted for inflation, according to box office Mojo. Okay, number one, Gone with the Wind. Released in 1939, it's one of the world's first genuine blockbusters, with a grand total of 1,786,074,500 dollars. Number two, Star Wars from 1977, the George Lucas space opera that launched a thousand action figures and almost as many sequels and prequels, still reigns supreme in the Star Wars universe with a total take of 1,574,577,200 dollars. Number three, The Sound of Music from 1965, The Hills Are Alive, with the sound of 1,258,951,900 dollars in domestic ticket sales. Number four, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. The biggest movies of 1982 is also the fourth biggest movies of all time, with a grand total of 1,253,992,300 dollars. Number five, Titanic from 1997. James Cameron's award-winning film took in 1,197,594,300 dollars during its theatrical run. So, do you think that it's valid that these films made that much money? Let me know in the comments below. See ya.